anger is one of these emotions that is by all means destructive. People talk about it all the time. And yet I find that I hate admitting this. There's a part of me that enjoys that enjoys it. Absolutely. Anger is really seductive. I mean, you feel so self-righteous. Yeah. But what's happening is your amygdala is driving your prefrontal cortex. So you're going to do something or say something you're going to regret later, most likely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's the road rage, which, is, you know, can be fatal. And uh, um, the way to manage that is it's really a case study in impulse control. These are emotional impulses. What's happening is the amygdala is hijacking your prefrontal cortex when you get angry. And if you can be self-aware, you can feel it coming on and you can tell yourself, I'm getting angry again. When you do that, when you name it to yourself, you actually shift the energy from your subcortical networks, the amygdala and so on, to your prefrontal area, the thinking brain. And it gives you the ability to um, be more likely to short circuit the anger. This is brilliant. Of course, easier said than done. But I do feel what you call the rage rush where, yeah, I'm self-righteous, but also it, this there's there's dopamine hitting me. It feels me. so good. I'm breaking a sweat, right? Yeah, it's like I just went right. for a little jog. And you really don't care at that moment that yeah. you're destroying the relationship or that you're going to do something that could get you in jail. Right. Or that you're going to do something you just feel bad about later. Right. And, and this happens. At the moment, it feels so good. It feels so good. Right. And I look for, and some depending on my mood, and my wife is all too familiar with this, I will look for reasons to be angry about something. And it's the dumbest thing ever. But I, I got hooked on it probably as a kid. My dad is worse than I am when it comes to this. So yeah. I think I saw that pattern. And So uh, there's one thing that um, diminishes uh, the, the rage rush, uh, and that is uh, cognitive control, which is the ability to manage your emotional impulses. One thing that increases cognitive control, there are many, but one that does is meditation, mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Uh, being developing the capacity to watch what's going on in your mind so you can tell yourself I'm getting angry now the very fact you can say that to yourself sends the momentum in another direction actually literally into different brain circuits hmm. and that's going to diminish the intensity uh, and also going to help you be more resilient resilient resilience is measured as the peak of arousal in the brain and anger is very arousing yeah till to getting back to baseline to calm the quicker that is the quicker your recovery the more resilient you are resilience uh, is the opposite of getting stuck in rage or anxiety it means that you can break out of that uh, particular emotional state and get back to a state where you're calm and clear however if you want to be angry and you enjoy it go right ahead <laughs> it's just be aware of the consequences that you're bringing uh, exactly. under yourself. Yeah. What about worrying? Another thing I'm really good at. Yes. There are unexpected benefits to worrying, which I was quite surprised to hear. Well, the function of worrying, positive worrying, is to mull over a dilemma or a problem or a frustration, uh, and uh, which often, by the way, have to do with relationships, it turns out and to come up with something you can do that might improve the situation. That's the function of worrying. Worrying is getting you to pay attention to the problem. The, the difficulty is when worrying becomes rumination. Sure. In rumination, you just play the same loop over and over and over again and never come up with a solution. Right, yeah, or you're worrying about a problem. You're drawing attention to a problem that doesn't actually exist. Well, that's even worse. Right. That's And I'm good at all of those things. <laughs> um, I just think it's very interesting that there are benefits to worrying. I'd never thought of it that way. But, of course, we evolved it for a reason. How do we mitigate that? How do we temper the worry? Well, if it's functional, no reason. Then there's to no need it. to. Yeah. But it becomes dysfunctional very easily. And uh, the one sign of the dysfunction is you're thinking the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to break. That's when uh, worry turns into anxiety. And anxiety just doesn't help. Um, I once heard the Dalai Lama say something really great. He said, if you can change things, why worry? And if you can't change things, why worry? Why worry, yeah, sure. So worrying actually serves no function. 
problem solving does. serves a function, but rumination doesn't serve a function. So what we can do is what challenge worries before they become one rumination. Thing you can do one thing you can do is name what's going on. Oh, I'm caught in worry. Mm -hmm. When you say that, you're shifting the energy from the circuitry and the subcortical part of the brain, which carries the worry and keeps, it's a salience network. This is important, this is important. Think about it, think about it. You're shifting it to the prefrontal cortex, which can see uh, that this is not that useful. 